Welcome, FNUSA57 here. Once again, I'm back on my Xbox One and bringing you another video. Today's video is for Gears 5, and I will be showing you the fastest and easiest way to complete all of the brand new event medals. This is the Boss Rush Horde Event Metal Group, and uh, the rewards for this sadly are not a custom skin, but 3,000 Gears coins as well as each medal is worth three stars for a total of 15 stars. What you need to do is Carrier Hunter, Matriarch Hunter, Wakatu Hunter, Snatcher Hunter, and Kestrel Hunter. All of them are the same thing, and that is get five of the respective boss elimination in the Boss Rush Horde event. Now, this must be done in the Boss Rush Horde mode, and um, it's actually pretty easy to do, so... Starting uh, here, well, technically yesterday afternoon, I believe, so like February 2nd in the afternoon, there is a new Horde event. Now, these are limited time Horde events. They usually last about a week to two weeks, so get this done as fast as possible. But you're going to go over to Multiplayer Category Horde and then the Boss Rush event. Now, sadly, we cannot do this in a custom lobby. I've already tried. So you have to do a public lobby, which is a little bit on the annoying side. And I would estimate that this will take you, if you're really lucky, you can get it done in one game. If you're not lucky, it'll probably take you two games. But uh, yeah, figure figure safely two games it's really easy it's a 10 wave event i'm going to recommend that you play on beginner because there's really no need to play on a higher difficulty uh, you can of course play on a higher difficulty if you would like to but uh, i don't see the point in terms of doing that since it doesn't really matter so go ahead and search for a game like i said we can't do this in a private lobby which is sad it does work out better if you have a full team. Um, I've only played one match of it, and it's been on um, training grounds, but I've had other people tell me that they've gotten Pahanu, which is what we just got. And I had one person say that they got Icebound, but I don't really know if that's accurate. Um, as far as classes, you're going to want to run one of a few different classes for this. You're either going to want to use Anchor if you have it, um, Pilot if you have it, Gunner if you have it, or Brawler if you have it. I believe those are the best classes for this as they regenerate ammo or have damage over time effects, which will make it easier to do. You could also run the Tactician as well, but one of those classes is going to be the best bet for you. I will be using Anchor um, but like I said, Gunner works really well. You can regenerate ammo. Uh, if you use Brawler, you just have to make sure that you have the incendiary munitions on. Really any class will work, but to make it as easy as possible, I would recommend using a class that has a damage over time effect and or regenerates their own ammunition. Just because if you're running with a random team, chances are they're not going to build anything. Now, this mode does allow you to use your ultimate abilities. There is a fabricator. You can build fortifications. The enemies drop power. Uh, so basically, it's normal horde, except you're going to fight one or more bosses every single wave in addition to a few random enemies. Now, depending on how your RNG is as to what bosses spawn on what wave, that is going to determine how many games this takes. I could have technically had it done in one game, but my first test run, I missed one of the carriers, and therefore I, I didn't get it. But the way it's going to work is it kind of runs off of a, a Horde Frenzy setup. So it's only going to be 10 waves. The moment that you pick up the Fabricator, it's going to give everyone 10,000 power as soon as you set that Fabricator down. And of course, depending on the team that you're working with, you can either choose to donate that power or um, you know keep it for yourself. It just depends on the difficulty that you're playing on and the team that you're working with. More than likely on low difficulty, you're going to save that power for your perks. 
This way, like the fact I'm playing anchor, I'll be able to get ammo regen. And obviously I can bleed with my active Boltok rounds if I have bloody shot on. Uh, so capture the taps. You'll notice you have 10,000 power to start with. That's the, what everyone gets. And there will also be three taps starting on wave one, which is pretty nice. Now what you get boss-wise does vary. And that's why you have to be careful. But usually whatever boss you get on the first wave, you're going to get at least one of on every single wave after that. And the whole idea is kill them as fast as possible, but try not to just one-shot them. Since you need eliminations, it's actually very easy to do this because all you have to do is put damage on the target. You do not have to be the one to get the kill you do not have to be the one to even um, do like half damage or anything like that you just have to do some damage so if you're gonna make like me and play the anchor that has uh, increased health and everything you're gonna want to do your ammo regen to five to six and then work on damage and health go ahead and skip the waves as fast as possible You'll notice there's a carrier over there. So I'm going to quite literally just put one active Boltok round on that. And then we'll go and just kill off some of these regular enemies that spawn. The metal popped up and you can see that a teammate killed the carrier. In the bottom left hand corner of the screen I had a little plus 14 number by it. Uh, as long as you get a plus number, meaning that you got some kind of points credit for the kill, that means that you did damage to the enemy, and uh, that counts as getting a assist. So you can just go through, deal with the regular enemies that spawn, and at the point you finish all of your medals, if you want, you can go ahead and just back out. It's not really fair to the other people that you're playing with but um to each his own i'm not a particular fan of this event but at least thankfully this event is not causing the game to crash and bug out as terribly bad as the previous horde events did so that's a good thing but each wave is going to continue to get more difficult you'll be facing more bosses per wave and, of course, you'll also be facing some more just filler enemies. Um, again, that's why I recommend playing a class that regens its ammo. The filler enemies aren't really too bad to deal with, and there's not a crap load of them. But uh, if you prioritize the bosses first, you'll usually end up, especially on the later waves, you'll end up spawning maybe one extra boss per wave. So when you're going for these eliminations, it's definitely better to take them out. Uh, take out the bosses first and then focus on the little enemies. Provided you can do that and you're not getting overrun. Uh, now a couple tips gameplay wise. If you've never fought a Wakatu, it's probably the most annoying boss there is. There is a chance that it can glitch out permanently and ruin your run. So you do have to bear that in mind now that does not happen frequently but i have had it happen you'll notice i have a separate video on my channel posted for that but uh, i recommend you prioritize the bosses depending upon your difficulty and team comp prioritize the flyers first so the wakatu and the kestrel take those out first and then prioritize like the snatcher and um, if you can, leave the Matriarch for last. But once the Matriarch's aggroed, you got to take that thing out pretty quick. Otherwise, it can wipe your team, even on a lower difficulty, just because of the fact that it's basically an insta-down if it touches you. And then the moment you're down, it'll just execute you. So keep that in mind while playing. The bosses do drop power, and of course, you can collect more power from the energy taps every wave. I would recommend that you do so because this way you can go ahead and upgrade your perks farther. Again, if you want, you can build stuff and you can put power in the fabricator and build fortifications. 
Um, I don't really see the point. The only fortifications that I would even remotely recommend possibly building would be dependent upon the map. And it would be like a couple barriers and a couple weapons lockers if you have classes that, well, are reliant on the weapons locker. If you don't have classes that are reliant on the weapons locker, then you don't really have to worry about it too much. Um, I had that glitch where I just got stuck on that Wakatu, which is annoying. Remember, if you are playing Anchor, you have your shield, and anyone including yourself that shoots through the shield gains a 50% damage bonus. Uh, of course, on this low difficulty, most of the time, your teammates are just going to be running around doing really whatever they feel like. So, that is this um, boss rush game mode. As I said, the medals you can complete in one to two games just depending upon exactly what enemy you get as the first one you'll also get wardens from time to time there is no medals for the wardens so just kill them and then don't even worry about it move on but other than that super simple game mode i'm not gonna play this entire match out only because there's no point. Um, you've seen me complete that medal, so I'm going to go back to the main menu after this round ends. Uh, I'll be nice and I'll put my power in the fabricator. This way, if these guys want to build something, they can. But it's on a low enough difficulty that it doesn't really matter. They'll be fine. There's a tactician demo. And they've got all the energy tap, so it's not a big deal. It's not the nicest thing to do, but in interests of time and recording for the video length, there's no point in going through all 10 waves because nothing changes. At max, you'll get like five bosses on the map at the same time. You can have multiple carriers. You can have multiple snatchers. I have not seen multiple Kestrels, multiple Wakatus, or multiple matriarchs at the same time however once you kill one especially on the later waves like say um wave seven through ten those last three waves uh we literally killed the game that i was in we killed like six kestrels back to back to back like killed one and then another one spawned killed an that one and another one spawned and it just kept doing that so that is boss rush for you if you guys have any questions whatsoever feel free to ask i'll always do my best to help you out if you enjoyed the video please do me a huge favor smash that like button share the video with your friends because that helps me out with the searchability of videos here on youtube and of course subscribe for more content so i'm just going to show you that the metal group is completed this is not one that you have to actually stay in uh, you do get two skill cards if you complete all ten waves. So basically the same as regular Horde. One skill card every five consecutive waves. And there's the completion for the Carrier Hunter. So there's my 3,000 coins bonus. And if we go to the Metal Group, you'll see Boss Rush Metal Group. All of them completed. So pretty easy and i'm not going to complain about a free 15 stars and 3,000 coins but i do wish it was a unique weapon set it's an all right game mode um i would care more for it if we could do it in a private match and then that private match um you know you could play it on master because at least there'd be something for that and uh you know more xp and whatnot but because you can't when you go and you look, there's only Horde and Horde Frenzy. There is no event game mode for a private game. It's a little disappointing. Well, in any case, I hope you all enjoyed. And until next time, my brothers and sisters, I Legion, stay frosty.